What's up guys, J.O. here from Barley Hops and Tabletops. And after countless plays over the last couple weeks using the Rooks, our group has decided that there must be an optimal number of Rooks to bring into a mission. Because if we bring too many, it's too difficult. And if we only bring a few, it almost seems like it gets easier. So, I want to look at today how many Rooks is the optimal number to bring in okay so pros for the rooks one they look freaking awesome and they're fun little pieces to play with so that's cool they offer a lot of versatility uh, there's many different things you can do between movement and powers and attacking bosses and things like that they have a rook power on their die which is usually a very unique ability that they can do i like those a lot and they offer more options to do damage and then on top of that they just do more damage per round. They're doing seven damage a round, and that's 3.2 more damage than a hero. So, yup, sign me up for these guys. Ah, and just like that, this game does such a great job of balancing things, and they really did an awesome job to balance these rooks out. First of all, you get this unique die. You do not have to roll it, but it is one of your four die. It does have the rook power on it, which is great, but it also has that malfunction. And there's an average of 1.2 malfunctions and rook powers rolled per round. There's an extra spawn added for each rook per round. And in addition to that, they add these enraged spawns, which are horrible. There's two added to the deck for each rook. And they have the average number go up to 5.5 guys that are spawned per card whenever these are pulled. Okay, so this brings up the question, are the rooks worth bringing in? And our group has debated this week in and week out over the last month as we've been using them a lot. Or is there an optimal number of rooks to bring in? So we started to look at the data and we basically took the additional damage that the rooks are doing and wanted to compare that to does it make up for the additional spawn and for the enraged spawns being in the spawn deck and the probability of them being drawn each round. So we got our fancy little chart here. Down on the x-axis is the number of players. And then the y-axis, this number is a little confusing, but it's basically a damage efficiency. And it's telling us how much more damage this group is doing on a particular data point above how much damage was expected to be spawned that round. So what that really just means is lower numbers are worse, higher numbers are better. Okay, first observation here is the blue line where there are no rooks in play. It's just the normal straight up heroes. And we can see that as we get higher in player counts from two to six, the game actually gets easier. I know this was a popular online belief, and here's some data that supports that. So that's pretty cool. Next thing here, we see that in two, three, and four player counts, it is actually better to put one and two rooks into the game. It makes it more optimal and it makes the game easier to play. The break even point for rooks is at five players. This is where no rooks it equals roughly the one and two rook um, addition to damage per round. And then you can see at six players it's actually better to have zero rooks in the game. And here we can see that three rooks is really the threshold for normal difficulty. It is not as optimal as one and two, but you can still play it and have a pretty good challenge. Four, five, and six rooks really puts the game into a nightmare difficulty mode. All right, guys, so that's all the data on the rooks. We're going to have an upcoming video on an overview of each one. Let us know what you think in the comments and smash that subscribe button. Peace.